Hello everyone, I'm joining you from vacation actually. We are here in Pensacola, Florida, uh, just doing a little family trip. It's the first trip that we've done in over two years since I uh, injured my ankle. So today we're gonna be answering a question from someone uh, over on my new free school community. The question comes from KH. He is a new dividend investor and he says he's been using the dividend growth strategy for about two and a half years. His relative, or I guess a relative of his wife, has generated a portfolio that produces 90,000 to 120,000 in income. His portfolio generates about $100,000 annually. And his question is basically a portfolio construction question. So he's got a stock in his portfolio, Caterpillar, that's up almost 50% from what his average cost is. And he asks, does he dollar cost average into it to balance out the portfolio um, to make it more equal weight in all positions? Or should he just let the winner keep running? So my tendency here would be to say not to sell. And there's basically three reasons why, uh, at least personally, I would not do that. And the first reason is the question of whether or not stocks are mean reverting. So if you have an equal weighted portfolio and stocks are mean reverting, that is a good thing. So this stock goes up, down, up, down, up, down. And let's say we have another stock that goes down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So ideally, if this stock is low and this stock is high, you would sell it, put money from this stock into the next stock, that stock would then go up, you would sell it, and just continue to do that cycle of buying and selling, buying and selling uh, at tops and bottoms of each position. Now anyone that has invested for more than like a week knows that this actually does not happen. Well, at least it doesn't happen ideally. Like in some cases, uh, assets do go through periods of underperformance and outperformance. And so if you can rebalance that can benefit your portfolio. However, I don't necessarily agree that stocks are mean reverting. There is research that suggests that about 80% of the returns of stocks come from about 20% of stocks. So I said that poorly, but basically 20% of stocks in say the S&P 500 will be responsible for 80% of their long-term returns. A lot of people have studied this and found similar, similar things. And so if you have a stock that is on its way to long-term outperformance, destined to become one of the 20% that generates 80% of the gains, and you have another stock that's kind of destined to be kind of a middling uh, to losing position, one of the 80%, then the worst thing you could do would be to sell the winning position, the long-term winning position, and buy more of the long-term losing position. So if you believe that stocks are mean reverting, then you would argue for rebalancing the portfolio towards more equal weight. But if you believe that stocks tend to be in long-term cycles of outperformance, where 20% of the stocks produce 80% of the returns, then it becomes more likely than not that Caterpillar, in this particular case, is one of KH's winners and so that would mean he probably should not sell it. And that's what I would do in his situation because this is more what I believe to be the case. The second reason I would probably not sell it has more to do with the individual stock. But the point is really that if you're gonna sell something, you should sell it because the business is performing poorly. That or you think the stock is grossly overvalued. But in this case, if we look at Caterpillar, particularly over the last three years, the stock has done exceptionally well. Returns on invested capital are actually now at an all-time high at 18.7%, uh, which is quite impressive. Revenue growth over the last three years has been 22, 16, 6, and 12.8%. Gross margins have expanded from 29 to 35. Operating margins have also expanded quite nicely. So if you believe this is a temporary phenomenon, then that would argue for selling it. But if you believe the long-term business for Caterpillar is still sound, I don't think I would sell it. And by all accounts, this looks quite impressive. Now you could say that over the longer term, 10-year compound annual growth rates 
don't look that great for revenue, assets, or free cash flow. Earnings per share are pretty impressive. That's the one I probably tend to look at the least. Still, return on invested capital suggests that Caterpillar is doing something right and operating at a very high level. The third point, and the one that I think is probably most relevant, is decision fatigue. The problem, I think, with trimming Caterpillar, or really any position, is just the can of worms that it opens. So let's say, really, you have kind of four total decisions that you could make as an investor. So you could buy something in the portfolio, you could sell something in the portfolio, you could also top up something or add to an existing position, or in KH's case, he's considering trimming a position. That is four total decisions that you have to be making, and you have to be making them always about all the positions in your portfolio if you're gonna do the top and trims as well. So if you have 30 stocks, you're always trying to figure out, should I top them, should I trim them? And not only does that add a ton of work to your plate and a lot of time that I'm not sure is going to be rewarded, it also introduces a lot of regrets. Um, I think that's, so let's say in this case that KH decides that he's going to trim CAT. So he trims CAT and let's say it turns out to be a good decision, the stock drops by 50%. Well, guess what KH is gonna be doing he's going to be thinking, wow, I should have sold the entire position. And on the other hand, let's say the stock would go up another 50%. Well, now his thought bubbles are gonna be, well, I should not have trimmed that. So he's gonna regret it either way. And so that's why I think, and why I've decided personally, that my best thing that I can do is to eliminate decisions and so that's why I personally have become a buy-only investor. So by doing buy-only investing, I am basically saying that there are going to be some stocks that I buy, these 20% of stocks, that are going to be responsible for 80% of my long-term performance. I don't know ahead of time which those are going to be, but I believe with my whole heart that that's going to be the case. And so I am not going to decide to trim these long-term winning positions. I'm just going to continue to hold them. I'm also not going to try to top up any losers with the assumption that they might become the 20% winners. My guess is that most of the losers are going to end up in this pile. And so I don't want to add any more money to them. You could argue that, well, why wouldn't you just go ahead and sell these stocks and move them to new positions that might be 20% of winners? And the reality is that I just don't know which ones those are going to be. There, it's probable that some of these losing positions are going to become long-term winners. So the easiest thing for me to do is to just focus 100% of my decision on what do I want to buy right now? What's the best opportunity for me in this current market? Forget about everything else and just buy. So thanks for the question, KH. Uh, if you want to join the school community, it's actually been a, an absolute blast. I've only had it for a couple of weeks now. Uh, but you can sign up for free with the link in the description down below. It's just school.com slash investing. You get points if people like your posts. Uh, so this is the 30-day leaderboard so far. Uh, Nick, Kyle, Michael, David, and Lars have all been very valuable contributors so shout out to all you guys. Thank you for being part of the community. It's been great, completely free. Uh, you also get access to my Financial Freedom Formula e-course. Uh, so as you get more and more likes, you unlock more and more levels. You'll get access to more and more uh, content. I'm also going to be adding my How to Value Stocks e-course on there as well. Uh, both of those courses sold for you know, anywhere between $100 and $200. So it's about $300 worth of courses that I'm putting on there absolutely free. It's free to sign up, so check it out. I think there's a lot of valuable members over there already, a lot of valuable content. Ask a question. If you're just getting started investing, this is a great place to learn with people that have a lot of experience and a lot of wisdom to offer. Thanks, KH, for the question, and uh, I will see you in the next video.